Good morning. Um, my name is Robert Kelly. Um, I'm, an, I'm an American academic from South Korea, and I'll be interviewing our guest here. Um, thank you for coming. I think a lot of people have a lot of interesting questions and, and would like to hear the, the, the events of your life and how you got to the point where you defected. So we have about 15 minutes, so I'm going to jump right in because I actually the ambassador has a great deal of interesting things to say. Um, so we've seen over the years, I think most of us are now aware that the average North Korean citizen struggles, right? We know that um, the average North Korean faces a caloric deficit. Um, we understand that the average North Korean sort of lives under a police state. But I think many people are curious what it's like for a North Korean diplomat. Um, did you have a sense of distinction from the rest of the population? What was life like um, near the top of the North Korean system? Interesting question. Whenever I travel, uh worldwide, the first question you know, I receive is that, why, you, why did you defect? You are one of the highest ranking of North Korea. You are rich in North Korea. You have all those privileges. What's the reason? So whenever I have these questions, I defect North Korea for freedom. You know, as a diplomat, uh, I spent some time uh, in Europe, for instance, I uh, served in North Korean embassies in Denmark, Sweden, and my last two service was in London. And whenever I work in those foreign countries, I always took my wife and my two sons with me, and my last post uh, was in London. And during, as a diplomat, I had to uh, lead a very uh, double life. For instance, when I meet, uh, the foreigners, uh, and I have to protect North Korean system and its policies, which I do not believe in. Uh, but at, in the evening, uh, we, when we have a uh, family, you know, the dinner, uh, we have always these uh, family, the debate about uh, the British system and North Korea. And whenever we went back, uh, to North Korea because, you know, after I spent two or three years in Europe, then I, we should go back to North Korea. But well, whenever we went back to North Korea, it is one of my greatest concern to control uh, my sons because they experienced the freedom, democracy, all the basic concepts of human rights in London. So when they uh, back in Pyongyang, in North Korea, they have to be very careful not to tell his friends what he experienced. So uh, his friends kept on asking my sons, how about the life in London? And my, it, these questions always put my sons in a very difficult situation because he can't tell his uh, friends about internet, the YouTube, right. Internet games, the books, or s songs he sang. So my sons always ask me, Daddy, my friends kept on asking about our life in London. Then I, my answer is that, please read the Oliver Twist again. About, you know, that is the, one of the few novels which were allowed to be read right. in North Korea. And right. my son would copy some of the stories of, of Oliver Twist and tell his friends. <laughs> this is the life in London. So, you know, this kind of right. uh, a pressure, psychological pressure went on, right. you know, built up on me, my kids, my wife. So, in, when my kids, you know, my kids were controllable when they were young, but when they reached the age of my first son, when uh, he reached the age of 26, my, my second one was 19, they have their own, you know, viewpoints, and they were very much frustrated. But so, uh, at last, I decided uh, to break free uh, okay. because, as a father, I think it is my last mission to cut the chain of uh, slavery. Because I thought that the life as a diplomat and the life of the children of diplomats of North Korea is nothing but the more than, you know, the slavery. That right. is the amazing and reason. And you've defined North Korea as a modern-day slave state. Would you like to expand on that? Yes. Uh, first of all, you know, North Korean system always brainwashes people that North Korea is the capitalist paradise where uh, the free education, free medical care, free housing are applied to the masses of the people, and the capitalism is the devil, 
but actually these free education, free housing, uh, free medical care are only available to some group of the people because North Korea is a society which is built on classification of its people. Around 20 or 50 percent of the population are belonging to so-called core class where uh, I used to belong. And uh, these pe only these people are privileged to enjoy some of the benefits of North Korean system. And the rest, majority of the North Korean people are banned to enter good jobs, right. like the job like me, you know, right. or they are banned to uh, enter good universities, good jobs. There is no, absolutely no freedom. I want to uh, tell them that even North Korea, there's no freedom to be unemployed. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? There is no freedom to be unemployed. The government and their regime appoint your job. And if you are appointed a job, you have to follow the instructions of the regime. Okay. I think many people wonder, now that we have a new Kim in charge, we have a third Kim, Kim Jong-un, um, is there any possibility of shifting loyalties within the regime? Do you see any change, anything going on within um, the North Korean elite, within the leadership that, that symbolizes that um, there might be change coming? Oh, uh, these uh, years, I think, uh, changes are taking place, but uh, the changes are taking place uh, very uh, slowly because of the uh, smuggling in a lot of uh, cultural contents of South Korea, right. America. Now, North Korean uh, population uh, watch these cultural contents secretly at night. So, you can, North Korea is a kind of society where the people uh, pretend to be loyal right. to Kim Jong un and its regime, but at night they watch right. American films or South Korean dramas or movies. So, right. I think the the people's uh, mentality are uh, taking place, but uh, change, changes are taking place. But on the meanwhile, the North Korean regime, Kim Jong-un regime, intensified its uh, policy of uh, terror. Right. So that's why the people in North Korea are very much terrified. They know quite well that if they uh, stand up or challenge against the system, then they would be immediately sent to uh, prison camps, right. or if uh, he openly challenged the re uh, system, then you could be e just, you know, uh, persecuted without any dual uh, trial. This, so the people are just terrified in right. North Korea. Can, can you speak more to, um, because I think this interests our audience, can you speak more to uh, information entering North Korea and the possibility of change? The Human Rights Foundation has actually worked on this. The Human Rights Foundation um, has emphasized this idea also, and so have many other human rights campaigners, the idea that if we flood North Korea with information, the preferences of young people as they grow up will sort of slowly bend the regime over time. HRF has supported a, a flash key campaign to send flash keys into, into North Korea. So can you speak a little bit more to this yes, idea of information North changing? Yes, North Korea has a very uh, a peculiar structure of the power where Kim Jong-un, the supreme leader, is uh, regarded as like a god. So uh, the supreme leader, the leader of North Korea is the god, and after him there is a party's regulation, and after party's regulation there is a constitution. So it's a kind of society which is controlled by a one man and one a family. And the basic principle which uh, govern North Korea is the North Korea Workers Party's uh, ten principle of monolithic ideological uh, the system. But uh, Kim family actually copied this ten principle of monolithic ideological system from ten commandments right. of the, from the Bible. Is, right. It is exactly the same. They, right. they just changed uh, the God to Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. So that's why. That's yeah, true. Yes, yeah, so I think it is very important yeah. to smuggle in the outside information to educate North Korean people that Kim family is not the God. Right. Y yes, they, they are just human beings. You know, right. the principles they are applying are just the copy of Ten Commandments from the Bible. So, yes, so I think when we educate, of course, the, the change is very 
take, is, will take place very slowly, but when we can educate and enlighten North Korean population with outside information, so that if North Korean people can have ability to compare the North Korea right. with the rest of the world, when they have the sense of comparability, then I think we can make a change inside North Korea. But now current North Korea is totally isolated. Right. Uh, yes. But you, you told me in our, in our, in our pre-conversations, you told me that the North Korean elite doesn't really believe the ideology. Um, so if the North Korean elite doesn't believe it and the population also experiences all this new information coming, how does that lead to change inside North Korea? I mean, do, 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 does everyone at some point kind of agree there's like a social agreement that the ideology is just a, is a myth, it's just mythology? How does information change North Korea? Like in 20 years, what would all this information flood make North Korea look like? I think uh, if we uh, disseminate outside information, at least we can uh, change uh, the, the way of thinking of uh, individual North Koreans. If okay. you see, the, every individual are just you see, one dot. But if these dots are changed by outside information, if any day, if there is a spark, I think, then I think these changes can be connected, these dots can be connected into lines. And if these lines uh, uh, right. become into kind of small square, you know, so that's right. why I think anything uh, can take place if we can educate it by, okay. we can educate North Korean population by dissemination of information. Because the difference between the communist uh, states and capitalist states is that nothing is uh, predictable in okay. communist states because right. everything was suppressed right. by the regime. The people do not open their minds easily, so even the regime do not understand how much frustrated North Korean people are at this moment. Okay. So I think uh, the most important thing is to disseminate as much as information we should smuggle in more and more so that the, the people must be educated in advance. Okay, we've only got a couple more minutes. So I'd like to ask a little bit about the human rights violations, which I think are pretty well known now. And in the West, um, the UN released a major report uh, shepherded by Michael Kirby a few years ago that goes into pretty grim detail. I would encourage you all to read at least the praises if you have the time. Um, as a diplomat, how much did you know about this? I mean, were you aware of the level of, of torture and brutality in the gulags? Kirby, Kirby analogized the North Korean gulag system to the Nazi concentration camp system, which is pretty horrific. Were, were you, were, are North Korean elites aware of this? Were you aware of, of course, this? Of course, you see, uh, everyone in North Korea knows these uh, political prison camps. It is a common knowledge, for instance, when uh, someone uh, beside you just disappear, then without any explanation by the government, by the regime, then everyone would just, you know, know that, oh, he and his family are sent to prison camps. Right. For instance, in the recent years when the uncle of Kim Jong-un uh, was persecuted openly in North Korea, a lot of my colleagues just disappeared. For instance, uh -huh. the uh, ambassador to Cuba, to Malaysia, they were just sent to uh, prison tech. camps be because nobody knows where. And wow. my friend, amb my amb the ambassador to Sweden, ambassador to UNESCO, all of a sudden were called back to Pyongyang and just they were expelled from the Ministry of Foreign. So these kind of things are very common even just beside me. So <laughs> it's really a universal mm -hmm. and common knowledge about the presence of uh, prison camps in North Korea. Is, is it possible, and I think another thing that a lot of us on the outside are interested in, is it possible for outsiders to pressure North Korea into l improving the human rights situation? Right? I mean, there's a huge human rights campaign out there, especially in the West, that looks at North Korea. Lots of groups have looked at this. Amnesty, Human Rights Watch, HR, lots of groups have worried about North Korean human rights over the, t over the years. D does any of that make a difference? Does, does it help? I mean, like, like, and, and if it does, how? Yes, I think so. I think we should go on to track. I think we have UN system, uh, which is uh, uh, on human rights. 
So, and I think we use this uh, governmental system to continue the okay. pressure on North Korea openly. And on the meanwhile, I think we should use the track of NGOs. Okay. I think NGOs nowadays have a very great influence. Mm. If we raise the voices on human rights, not only on North Korea, but all those human rights atrocities and abuses worldwide, and if we are united and connected each other, then I think that we can pressure our government to raise more pressures on North Korea or any, you know, those, those uh, tyrant governments worldwide so that I think uh, these uh, NGOs uh, connections are very important, I think, okay. uh, to raise the pressures on our government so that our governments raise more pressures on those tyrants worldwide, I think. Okay, we got about a minute here. We're over time, so I'm going to take up like one more minute to ask you one final question, just about the future, right? So, in in 10, 20 years, where is North Korea in terms of information, like we talked about, human rights? Will the leadership lighten up? I mean, are, are we stuck with another long 40-year Kim tyrannical reign, just like the previous two Kims? I mean, is there any possibility that this will improve? Can you offer any hope to to all of us that I think uh, we're making things better? Thank you. I'm absolutely sure that uh, Kim Jong-un regime uh, cannot go on another uh, 20 years. Of course, 10 years is too uh, short, but I think within 20 years, there will be a collapse really? of, because the young generations are growing in North Korea. The young generations are not interested in the uh, ideologies and they are more influenced by outside informations like American and uh, South Korean films and dramas. And now in Northeast Asia, uh, the people are traveling very freely around the world. And at this moment, there are around 100,000 North Korean workers worldwide. So they are traveling from world to North Korea. Uh, so these people carry these informations. They, when they travel to other countries for work, they see the free world and they see the free movement of the people. So I, this, this kind of, you know, uh, the knowledges may reach okay. the majority of the people. So that's why I think uh, okay. North Korea uh, will be changed. Uh, within 20 years. Well, we great should have a post. <laughs> very optimistic. Well, we really are out of time. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, thank you very much. That was fantastic. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you.